to begin, let's go ahead and go through the materials we'll be using today. Uh, first, the paint. I have here uh, the standard series tube. This is the 120 mil. Uh, a couple things about the tube that I'd like to share with you. Uh, first of all, of course, you'll find the color name. This is the primary cyan. Uh, this is our proprietary color number. Uh, this color is 572. And the great thing about this is regardless of the medium, uh, this 572 will represent the same pigment. So if you're in the Amsterdam acrylic, the Van Gogh watercolor, for example, 572 will be the same color. The other symbol you see here refers to the opacity of the paint. This particular paint is what we refer to as semi-transparent and is designated by this line through this empty square. To give you some examples of some of the other symbols, uh, here we have a completely empty square. That means that this paint is completely transparent. For this color, this gold, uh, half is darkened in uh, and that refers to a semi-opaque. And then, of course, I have some titanium white here, which is completely opaque. So those are the four symbols you'll find on the tube. Next to it are the light fast symbols. So three pluses is the excellent rating. This is the highest light fast rating that we have. Uh, this is 100 plus years under museum light conditions. Another feature that I'd like to point out uh, is this uh, paint also includes its color index number. Uh, it speaks to the quality of the pigments. The pigments here are listed uh, for you to see, so you can also compare them uh, specifically with other tubes or other uh, brands uh, as well. Uh, so that's some of the important information in the tube. So we've got our cyan blue I'll be using today. Uh, I also have one of our pearl colors. Uh, this is pearl yellow. I'm going to be using just a little bit of titanium white today. I have some of our gold. This is the deep gold. I really enjoy these metallic colors. They're wonderful. And then one of the reflex colors. Uh, this is reflex yellow. Uh, you're really going to enjoy uh, this when you see how it performs on the surface. Uh, other materials here I have, of course, a palette pad. Uh, I've got an Amsterdam brush, Talon's Art Creation palette knife. I have just a basic little sponge here I'm going to use to show you a fun technique as we get going. I have a couple of our custom made Amsterdam stencils, uh, fun Amsterdam street scenes. These were made for us by the Crafters Workshop. Really appreciate them doing this for us. Also, I have a canvas board here. Now, different from what you've got, I have actually prepared half of it with a black gesso. I'm using the Amsterdam's black gesso for this. Uh, and the reason I did that is to be able to give you uh, a real uh, uh, feeling or look at how these uh, specialty colors perform on a darker ground. I think you'll enjoy that. And then of course I've got a rag and I've got a bucket of water here. All right, let's get started. Uh, so the first thing I want to do is go ahead and put a little of the blue on right onto the canvas board. Just a little bit there. I'm going to brush that around. And what I'm trying to do here is just kind of give us a control I want you to see uh, what a one-dimensional, remember, absorption color, like we talked about in the presentation, looks like in action. Now, the cyan is a semi-transparent color, so we can see uh, that performance there. And a couple things you'll notice right off the bat is how different the color looks on the white ground versus the black ground. And a couple things are happening there. One, this is a transparent color, obviously, so we can see through it. But the other is because of its transparency, we have different light effects. The light is traveling through this paint, literally hitting the white surface, and white reflects all the spectrum of light rays back through it. So we get this really wonderful kind of glowing blue. The black ground actually absorbs all of the light rays, so nothing bounces back after hitting the ground. So all that we see is what the pigment is able to tell us. Uh, and it's not quite as exciting, right? We don't get that dynamic light effect. And that's where these specialty colors can come in and really give us some dramatic effects. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and wipe this a little bit, uh, just so I have a little bit of a drier, tackier surface to work on with the stencils. That's nice. So you can cover the whole surface if you want. I'm going to leave a little bit because I want to be able to see uh, some of the different effects. So the first thing we're going to do, uh, now that we have seen how just the standard absorption color goes, we're going to mix with one of the pearl colors. Uh, so let's go ahead and put just a, a little bit of this down. I'm going to put two spots of it and I'll show you why. I'm going to show you the difference between tinting with a pearl color versus tinting with white. So I'm going to put equal, maybe a little bit more of the pearl color. Uh, and then I'm going to take some titanium white, do the same amount. So this is one of the 
ways to use a pearl color. Uh, and I'm going to show you a couple different ones, but I love the way that you can tint a color without losing the intensity of the hue or its transparency. So let's go ahead and mix these together here. Now this is the pearl yellow. So it's going to mix with that blue and give us a little change towards the green side, make this blue a little cooler. You can already see too how it makes it a little more pearl in and of itself. I'll kind of show you how that looks. See that nice pearl tint and that extra luminosity. Uh, this is really a nice feature. Uh, and this is where a lot of folks don't think about how they can use these pearl colors. You really can increase the luminosity of a paint. And depending on how much you add, uh, it can be a very subtle change or it can be a very dramatic change. So there is that cyan blue mixed with the pearl. Now let's mix it up with the white. And you'll see right away the strength of that titanium white and its opacity dramatically changes the look. We had virtually the same amounts, same ratios uh, of paint, and we get two dramatically different colors. And this is where I really like personally the pearl colors, and that is you can tint a color, make it a little bit lighter with a pearl, uh, without losing its transparency and without losing uh, the brilliance of the original hue. So we're going to go ahead and do both of these on the surface with our stencil. All right, so I'm just going to kind of position it randomly here to begin with. Uh, I love working with stencils. One of the great things about stencils, especially when you're doing demos, uh, you have a, a broad array of folks. Uh, some have a lot of skills, some don't. Some really comfortable uh, uh, with their ability to paint or draw. Others uh, have a lot of anxiety about it, and stencils eliminate all that. Uh, you don't have to worry about what you're going to draw or paint, nor do you have to worry about how well you draw or paint, and then you can really focus on the properties of the material. So let's get our brush here. Um, I'm using just this uh, nice uh, Amsterdam flat. Uh, one of the things that's great about uh, these brushes is they are a synthetic brush, uh, but they really behave like a bristle brush, and that's nice when working with acrylics. Uh, traditionally with stenciling, you use a stencil brush, but we're not going to be worried today about getting the sharpest stencil, what I want to focus in on, on the interaction of the paint. So first let's uh, dip into this wonderful color that we've just mixed, and let's get a little bit out here on the surface. I'm going right over our stencil there. Again, not worrying too much about making the most perfect stencil. Um, really just want to get a feel for how the color lays down and some of the effects that we're going to experience. Bring a little bit more of it over here. Now we're going over parts that I had painted uh, already with blue. So hopefully you're going to see some of the difference between how this looks and the blue that's already laid down. Nice, I think that's getting good there. Since I'm layering wet into wet, I don't want to have too thick a paint. And when you brush it like this side to side over a stencil, you build up paint on the edges, pushes a little bit of paint underneath, and uh, that's not a traditional technique for stencils, but I think it makes for really fun edges, especially for this demonstration. So let's take a look and see what we got. Ah, uh, there we go. Uh, and some of the nice things too is you can actually see some of the yellows coming out uh, from that pearl color. Isn't that wonderful? Uh, here you can see uh, the tinted color against the, the traditional color that we put down. And you'll get a really good feel for the contrast between the two. We've intensified it. We've increased its luminosity. It's capturing more light waves. Remember those little prisms that we talked about that are inside the pearl colors? Uh, really creating a strong light effect. And it's even more dramatic in this darker area. You can barely see the blue I painted on uh, below anymore. As it dried, uh, the black really is just soaking up all the, all the light waves that we're, we're trying to define the pigment. Uh, but here we have a really bold example, some clear uh, marks, some great edges, and the yellow uh, in that pearl color is really coming through and giving us that kind of dual uh, effect. I really like that. So now let's compare it to the white. So there's a tinted color. Uh, we'll use the same stencil. We'll just kind of move it up a little bit. There we go. 
All right, let's see how it looks. I think you probably got an idea of how it's going to look, right? My stencil's a little crooked, but that's okay. So are some of the uh, buildings in Amsterdam, right? So you can see already how much more opaque that is. Get down here, maybe put a little more as we go over. All right, let's check that out. All right, pretty dramatic difference, right? So with the white, we create this opaque color uh, and we lose the transparency of the original uh, blue. Uh, so we don't get that fun play of light. Uh, we certainly get a nice opaque, uh, higher contrast edges, which is fun. Uh, but this is really kind of beautiful in its subtlety. Real nice, huh? All right, let's go ahead and see what the pearl color looks like all by itself. I'm going to grab a different stencil here. Let's go ahead and start a new building there. Got the pearl color again. Put that out, wash my brush. You can see my stencils have some mileage on them. They're really fun. I've done a lot of demos with these in the last year and a half, two years since we've had them, and they're super popular. All right. A little bit of blue on my brush is left there, but that's fine. All right, let's go right in here. You can see already the difference. See how dramatic that is? So some of what we're seeing is the binder. Of course, the acrylic binder like we talked about is milky white when it's wet and then dries clear. So this is going to look different as it dries. It's going to lose some of that white, some of those opaque passages and be that really wonderful glaze uh, that we have. And that's essentially what this technique is. And this is another technique that I really like for the pearl colors and that's glazing. So you can go over the top of some dry paint uh, and create this clear luminescent glaze that really accentuates whatever surface that you put it onto. Kind of carry it over a little bit. Across the middle here. I think that'll be a nice effect. Let me pull up the stencil. All right, I think we got enough there. Let's go ahead and take a look. All right, isn't that fun? So here is just the pearl color by itself. So we have the pearl color mixed with the blue, the blue mixed with the white. See the difference between the transparent and opaque layers. And here we have just the pearl yellow over the surface. Now some of that uh, opacity is going to go away as it dries and we're going to be left with these wonderful kind of yellow glazes over the colors. But isn't that wonderful? A really dramatic, dramatic effect. All right, let's get to the metallic colors. So we're going to be using the deep gold. Uh, I'm going to clear a little room on my palette here. Take this color aside for later. There we go. All right. Now this gold is such a beautiful color. Let me show you some of this up close. Get a really good feel for how rich these metallic colors are. Isn't that fantastic? Really, really rich, full color. So let's put our stencil back down. Now come in right over this. There we go. Maybe down a little bit there. There we go. I like that. All right. Let's get some of this gold. The water in my brush. I want to have a drier brush for this. So there it is. So this is a semi-opaque color. So we're going to have a really pronounced effect and some good coverage as well. So I'm going to go over here. 
mixing a little bit with the color that was on the stencil which is fine I like those kind of effects that happen by uh, accident if you will or intention see how well it covers over the dark uh, these look really really wonderful on the darker ground but they uh, because of their opacity these metallics work well on any toned ground or white surface. I'm going to get some of it over here. I just have a fear of these empty spaces. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Yeah, I think you're going to like this a lot. I'll just bring some touches of it in a few of these places, just little surprises of color. Unify the composition a little bit. All right, let's see how that gold looks on our stencil, on our painting. Ah, isn't that great? Looks like I put gold leaf on the painting. Really, really fantastic. Nice transition here, isn't it? as we're building up these layers of paint from transparent to opaque. Now just for an experiment I want to show you how these paints do, uh, the metallics do mixing colors. So let's go ahead and mix this gold with some blue. So they work really well in mixtures and maintain their metallic feel as long as the paint that you're mixing them with is transparent or semi-transparent. When you start to get into opaque colors you'll lose some of that. So here you can see the blue is taking on some of the characteristics of that gold paint. I'll bring this closer to the camera too so you can get a sense of it. So this was about a 50-50 mixture, right? So you can see how it captures the light a little more now right in there you can really see those gold. So you can really uh, create a unique type of surface tension when it comes to the color by mixing these together. And it's not an overtly metallic look. You know some artists kind of shy away from metallics because they, they feel that it's too glitzy or, or uh, too showy. Uh, but there are ways to subtly introduce them into the painting process without it overwhelming the rest of the composition and this is one of them. So let's go ahead and see how this looks. Grab different stencil again. I'll work that one in up there. Get my brush cleaned out. All right, let's see what we can do right up here. So the gold is semi-opaque so we get a little more covering power uh, but the blue being semi-transparent is having a, a counter effect and giving us the ability to create some depth through the paint itself. I think one thing you're going to see here uh, where I'm going over the black ground is how the metallic really changes the way you see the color Again, not overtly metallic, but just enough to create some nice contrast. Let's get that corner covered up there. Mm, that's looking good. All right, let's take a look at that. Oh, really nice. Look at that, folks. Look at that. It created this really warm blue next to these cool blues by mixing the gold with it. And you can see there's certain areas where the gold, especially where we've layered it, where the gold is coming through and just making that blue uh, glow around the edges. Really love that intensity. There's a vibration that's optical vibration that's actually happening. Uh, that's a whole other lecture, though.
So this is the blue mixed with the gold, so you can mix it through. It doesn't work quite as well when you mix them with opaque colors. Uh, I can show you a little bit um, with the white, for example. We can put down a little gold here, put down a little white. You're going to see the color, but it loses its ability to really create any extra reflection from those two-dimensional pigments. Remember our, our metallics are the two-dimensional pigments? And we get that mixed in and it's changed the look of the white. I mean it's a subtle difference, but there really isn't that metallic dance that's happening like we saw when we mixed it with the blue. And if we put a little on the surface you'll see it, it pretty much just looks like white, right? I'm not getting a lot of definition there. Pretty much just covers everything. So certainly can be done. You can create some subtle changes in hue, but you're not going to have the benefit of the two-dimensional pigment. All right, let's go now to the reflex color. So we're going to be using today uh, the reflex yellow. These are a semi-transparent to transparent range. Now one thing you'll notice on the light fast rating here is that we don't have any plus signs. All the reflex colors are dye based colors, which means they are not light fast. The zero means that it's a fugitive uh, or 10 minus years light fast. And that's true with all phosphorus uh, dyes. Uh, they don't have the, the longevity in terms of their pigment life. Um, but they do have advantages. Uh, a lot of folks today are creating work that's destined uh, for being digitally reproduced. Uh, there are a lot of artists who are, are not concerned with the archival nature uh, of the work. They're more concerned with the, the visual impact. Uh, and these offer that. Uh, illustrators, for example, graphic designers, uh, artists who are creating images that are meant to be reproduced, not saving uh, the actual work as, as a work of art to hang on the wall. Uh, these things can really add an extra punch uh, and create a lot of interest. For kids, they're super fun uh, paints to work with. Uh, for everybody, they're super fun paints to work with. Uh, so don't let the fact that they don't have the light fast quality uh, deter you from trying out these reflex colors. Uh, there are a lot of applications for them and a lot of fans uh, of these particular paints. So let's try it straight out of the tube. I'll put a little paint on the palette here. You can see already how intense that is. I'm going to show you it up close. Uh, these literally glow. Look at that. How wonderful is that yellow? Uh, so remember, these are those colors uh, that are reflecting more light back than they absorb. We're seeing those invisible ultraviolet uh, wavelengths of light. So super fun there. So I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to lay down my stencil again. I'm going to go back to the beginning, maybe offset it a little bit. There we go. Actually, I want to, there we go. I'm going to use that one. All right, let's put that there. I'm going to use my palette knife this time. This is a fun technique. Uh, you should give this a try. Uh, instead of brushing the paint in, I'm actually troweling it over the stencil. And you'll see there's some blue left on the stencil there, which is fine. Again, one of those fun improvisational results you get when you're painting. We're creating this kind of wonderful green. I love that. The thing that's happening when we're doing this with the palette knife is we're actually filling these little spaces in the stencil and creating a 3D, a literally 3D uh, surface on the painting. So this particular part that we're creating right now is really going to stand out, not just because it has this wonderful glowing color, but because we're putting almost a sculptural element into the surface of the painting. There we go. Ooh, I'm curious. This is going to be, I think, really dramatic. I love how that green uh, was created. All right. Oh, <laughs> do you see what I mean? Uh, how these colors just glow. So here we're, we're using a camera uh, to capture the light on these particular pigments and these just really stand out. 
doesn't it? it? It almost looks like it's levitating over the surface of the painting. Beautiful, beautiful result. Let's go ahead and mix some directly with the blue. We kind of got some of that green effect there, uh, but I want to show you how these mix. You can mix these colors with the other traditional absorbent colors. Add a little bit here uh, and create some fun, fun combinations. Uh, again, they work best with transparent colors versus opaque colors, and I'll show you that combination too. So we're making this really fun green, uh, but because this blue is transparent, uh, we're still getting those wonderful extra punch of light coming out of this green. All right, nice, nice green. Let's go. Let's go over here on the other side. I'm going to switch stencils again. Let's go right next to there. That should be good. All right, I'm going to trowel in again. That was kind of fun. Let's do it again. Oh, yeah. Really a nice green. I don't know how much you're seeing of this on camera, but there's just a little bit of a glow around the edges because of we're because of the uh, impact of the reflex color this is going to look nice these stencils uh, not only are they fun because of the Amsterdam street scenes but they have a lot of wonderful shapes, a lot of variety, a lot of juxtapositions of juxtaposition of form that creates a lot of energy on the surface. There we go. All right. Let's see how that turned out. Oh, marvelous. Look at that rich, rich color. And you see what I mean by the edges? The edges just capture a little bit of light that you wouldn't normally get. You can kind of see some of the more contrast we have down there. That's a nice, nice green. Nice green. Now let's mix it with the white. So the white, um, again, is opaque. Again, you can mix these with any of the colors, but this is going to take away some of it. We're going to get a really light, powerful color here because it's going to be so opaque, but not as much of that luminosity. A little bit, though. Fun yellow, for sure, especially in contrast to that green we just made, although we're picking up a little bit of it, which is fun. Kind of a lime-colored green, a lime-colored green. Still some unique mixtures, so even with the opaque colors, we're losing some of that phosphorescent glow, but... Uh, there's still a real dynamic energy that's coming out of these. All right, let's put that right in the middle here. You know what? Let's kind of overlap. There we go. Let's overlap here. We can do it whatever we want. We're creating our own Amsterdam street scene. So we can break whatever rules are out there. Hopefully you're trying this palette knife technique. I know you'll really enjoy it. It's a lot of fun. It's fun just to scoop the paint in like this, right? All right, let's see how that turned out. Oh, nice. Nice. Really, really nice. So this is a little bit more glowing. But that white, you know, such a powerful statement on top. Great. This is looking really well. Really well. Turning out really well. All right. I'm going to show you a couple other techniques here uh, with the paint. Let's go ahead and clear some room on the palette. So this next technique is going to be the reverse of the process that we've been doing so far. So, so far we've been laying this stencil down and adding paint over the top. This time we're going to put paint down and I'm going to show you a fun technique with the sponge. All right, so I got a little blue paint. Get my brush in there. 
think I'm going to come right in here. I want to see some more of this blue. Now this is something you have to do while the paint is still wet. Once acrylic dries, of course, it's impermeable. It makes a really, really tough paint film. So I've got the paint down there. Let's find one of our fun buildings. I think uh, this one looks pretty good. Let's lay that in there. All right. So now we take our sponge. Got it right here. I'm going to put it in my water. And uh, then I'm going to wring it out really good. We just want it to be damp. It doesn't want to be, we don't want it to be soaking wet. We don't want water all over the place. So got a damp sponge here. And now I'm going to go in and literally wipe up the paint that I just did, but masking it with the stencil. So a couple things that are happening here in this technique. One thing is, is obviously we're cleaning the paint up out of the areas that are left open by the stencil. But we're also pushing paint underneath the stencil. So we're going to create this really fun, almost monoprint technique. And it's really, it can be really dramatic, dramatic depending on how much contrast you have. But uh, let's take a look and I'll show you what I mean. We'll do this a couple times. See what I mean? Look at that. So again, we cleaned up the paint I put down, went down the blue, put the stencil over it, cleaned it up, and then it pushed paint as well as left paint uh, on the surface. And now we have this really nice, bold area. Isn't that fun? Fun technique. Let's go ahead and try it in reverse. I'm going to, this time, use my white and pearl mixed together. That's the pearl yellow there. Here's the titanium white. Maybe we'll mix it with a little bit of that blue. That might be fun. All right, that's going to be a fun color there. It's nice light blue with a little extra kick from the pearl. I'm going to do it right over here. Just up in this area, I think. I'm not going to do it all the way. Maybe a little bit down here. All right. Let's pick a different building this time. Come down a little lower, I think. There we go. So let's get our sponge damp again. All right, let's clean up some paint and see what we can do. So again, we're lifting and trapping paint underneath the stencil. Trapping's a good word for it, I think. This is what's so nice about acrylics, because it dries so quickly, you're able to do layering a lot faster than you would with an oil paint do these kind of techniques. Oh, that's nice. Look at that. Really nice contrast there. Here as well. And we're getting this really nice kind of back and forth up top in the composition. Like it. Like it. Hope you like that. So this last thing I'm going to share with you is actually something I haven't done before. I'm going to take this pearl yellow color a little bit there and then I'm going to mix it with wait for it the deep gold I know I'm getting crazy all right let's mix those together so essentially what we're doing is mixing thousands of tiny mirrors with thousands of tiny light prisms and creating an incredibly luminescent reflective color. 
So let's see what we get. Oh, yeah. Look at that. That is fantastic. Let me show that to you. Look at how that captures the light. Isn't that a wonderful color? It just glows under the light. This is going to be fun. All right. The final touches. Let's see what we can do here. I don't want to do it in too many places. I got a couple in mind here. Let's get our brush, get it nice and clean. Stip into that color. I think we need maybe a little right up this area. Maybe a little there. You know what I should do? I should, oh yeah, this is gonna be the way to go. Let's use the palette knife and just drag some of that color right down. There we go. And then I think over here, it'll look good down in this corner. Oh, a little accident there. I'm going with it. Picking up some of the paint on the stencil, which is fine. Maybe a little down there. All right, let's see how this stands out. Here we go. Oh, nice. Nice. Look at that. Look at how wonderful that is. Over here too, the contrast between the two, but look at how it's just capturing the light. 